Greetings, art lovers, and welcome to our second uh, sneak peek of the Rockport Art Association and Museum's upcoming 2020 annual auction with me, Judy Curtis. First off, let's take a look at Marguerite Pearson. Marguerite was raised in Boston and later moved permanently to Rockport, where she was successful enough to design and build her own wheelchair-friendly bungalow on Marmion Way. She'd suffered polio as a young teen and been left paralysed in the legs and with a weak right arm. As you can see how she holds the brush in this picture, uh, it shows you how difficult it was for her to actually be able to paint. And yet she was very determined uh, and she produced some wonderful paintings such as this one, Lady in Red. She always liked to use uh, historic costumes with bright colours and beautiful textures. Uh, it was strictly due to her own determination to be independent that she was able to study at the Fenway School of Illustration and later at the Boston Museum School. She also took private lessons from Edmund Tarbell and Aldro Hibbard. By 1934, according to the art critic of the Boston Globe, Marguerite had been to the forefront of Boston's painters. She's come to be one of the best portrait painters in the city an honour which will hold good in the entire country. She not only has a natural flair for portraiture, but she gives a portrait a sort of personal distinction, which makes of it a genuine work of art. Despite some people complaining her style was old-fashioned, Pearson was incredibly successful in her own lifetime. In fact, during the Depression, her parents had to give up their own home and went to live with Marguerite in the Fenway Studios. Uh, and Pearson actually became the breadwinner of the family, which I think says a lot about her determination uh, and her ability to know what the public wanted. Uh, she tried to get into the Grand Central Galleries in New York, a very uh, reputable gallery, and although they said yes, they would like her as an artist, they didn't want the paintings that showed the interiors with the ladies in the old-fashioned clothes. They felt they were dated, and yet that's exactly what Marguerite painted. That's what she enjoyed painting, and good for her. She stuck with it and decided she'd rather paint the way she wanted than to be in the Grand Central Galleries. And so she kept on producing works like this one. And you can see what beautiful lost and found edges that she manages to create. Uh, uh, creating a, an ambiance that uh, invites us in to share this moment of tranquility. Next we have Jane Peterson. We're looking at the women this week, obviously. Peterson became famous for her wide-ranging oeuvre from landscapes to still life and florals that blend impressionism and expressionism at the same time. As a woman, her life was much more independent and adventurous than many of those of her contemporaries, and she travelled widely to paint, including uh, throughout Europe and the Middle East. I mean, can you imagine setting your easel up these days in, uh, in the Middle East and painting in the streets? Peterson can't be pigeonholed in a particular school of painting, but she combined various techniques and styles from a variety of teachers. She studied at the Pratt Institute in New York City and also the Art Students League. Uh, later she went to Paris where she met Picasso and Matisse, although fortunately for us she didn't take up too many of their uh, techniques. She also studied with uh, Joaquin Soraya, excuse my Spanish accent, uh, the Spanish master under whose teaching she learned to paint a la prima. He would have her do uh, several small sketches uh, quickly to catch the light. And he also uh, introduced her to a high key palette, which was a better way to capture um, the, the spontaneity of light and impressionism. By 1916, Peterson was exhibiting work that she'd executed in the Pacific Northwest, as well as more local scenes along the Ipswich coast. Like uh, Emma McRae, Peterson had changed her style according to her subject, and we can see that this beautiful floral piece, although flat and decorative, has a big look where she's used colour to turn form, and the refined finish is reminiscent of the best of her work. She paints with complete assurance in simple combinations, and her luminous backgrounds add clarity to the pictures. 
It's amazing how she can capture the texture of something as delicate as these flowers and you can almost feel the velvety softness of these petals because of the texture and the lost and found edges. Next up we have uh, Marion Parker Sloan. She was an art critic and a landscape painter born in 1876 Salem, Massachusetts uh, and she died in Gloucester in 1954. She studied with Italian artist Marcel Juglaris at Boston's Museum School, of whom it was said that above and beyond his sheer skill with figural drawing and his knowledge of the European art tradition, he was appreciated for his pragmatic approach to art and the good example of his own discipline at the easel. With such excellent foundation training, Sloan went on to become a much-loved landscape painter herself. She is best recognised for her cloud-filled skies over hearty, full-bodied landscapes done in the impressionistic manner, such as this piece, Running Brook. Sloan's work is in the permanent collection of the Montclair Art Museum, and she was an art critic for the Boston Journal. She would retained a studio at the Fenway on Ipswich Street and was a member of the Guild of Boston Artists and Rockport Art Association. She was also a member of the Society for Sanity in Art Boston chapter with her friend Marguerite Pearson, whose adherents campaigned in favour of traditional art as opposed to surrealism and modern abstractionism. In fact, in 1940, they protested an exhibition of paintings by Picasso at the Museum of Fine Arts, Boston. Well, thank you for joining me for this uh, quick look at some more of the paintings to be uh, auctioned on Saturday, October 3rd at the Rockport Art Association and Museum. I hope you'll join me next week uh, for the third segment of our sneak peek. Thank you and have a good week.